اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session, I'm going to introduce Smart PLS 4. Smart PLS 4 has not yet been released to general public. Uh, I do have an early access just for the sake of making uh, videos and introducing uh, the software to research scholars. Now, this is how Smart PLS interface looks right from the start. If you open it, this is what it looks like. You've got new project here. You've got PLS SCM regression process to report a bug or request a feature. Now, Smart PLS 4 is a completely new development. You will be surprised how advanced and groundbreaking the new Smart PLS software is. On our website, you can read about all the new features. Well, for now, uh, you won't find much on the website as well. Workspace. Now, what happens in Smart PLS 4 is that all projects created with Smart PLS are always located in a folder on your computer. We call it workspace. You can see the path of the current workspace folder at the top of the title bar. So what you need to do is before you create a project, you need to choose your workspace, which folder you want to keep your projects in. So let me put it here. Where am I putting it? Let's say this is my folder now this cannot be used as a workspace you have to start with an empty folder or select an existing smart pls4 workspace so let's create an empty folder now that this is selected you can change the workspace as well now let's create a new project and let's name it my first pls4 project let's create it now again the first thing as we did with the smart pls3 the first thing is import data file and now you can have multiple data files you can have csv you can have spss you can have excel previously it was csv primarily that was used so let's Let's use CSV. Now here it is. Something new. And you can select the scale as well. Ordinal or categorical. The minimum maximum values. It's comma delimiter. Now you can have a missing value treatment as well. Smart PLS assumes every empty value as missing. Zero empty values were found in this data. In addition, you can specify a string or number that represents missing data in your data set. In this case, we do not have any missing data. Let's import. And here is your initial description of all the indicators and all the variables in your data set. The missing values, the mean, median, minimum maximum standard deviation and all everything in there now you can copy this information as well but for now let's leave it you can have indicators correlation here it is but for now we do not need it let's go let's look at this what is this setup again it was previously seen you can have groups you can generate groups and this is your raw file now moving back let's go back and let's choose what do you want to do pls scm regression or conditional analysis for now let's stick with very basic pls scm so what we do is we create our project so what is the project type it is pls scm and the file name is my first let's say this let's save it how to use this tool now there are different tools now the interface has changed a lot but for now let's say i want to see the impact of organizational learning so i select the indicators for organizational learning drop them drag them and drop them here and yes it should be named organizational learning so here it is and let's say we add the organizational performance 
drag it here drop it here and yes it should be named organizational performance so press enter and select this move the indicators to the left select it here and now let's say we link them so select connect and drag it and drop it onto the other variable here it is now that this is done the next step is let's run our model so we go to calculate PLS algorithm path all other checks out you can have unstandardized results as well now let's stick with standardized and let's start our calculation now if we come here this is the graphical output this is your beta these are your vector loadings so I select these and let me move them here here it is let me move it here here it is so these are your path coefficients you can have total effects as well in the inner model this is your inner model f square and all so you have your outer loadings weights and whatever you require this is your r square and look at this if you come on to the endogenous variable it shows you the results for your endogenous variable and if you come here for exogenous variable here are your results for exogenous variable so a lot of improvements have been made it's much more uh, user friendly i think it previously it was user friendly as well but now it's much more the results are more readily available as you go as you just hover your mouse cursor on the variables so let's see our report here it is you can have it exported in X, uh, csv or as we was previously so you can have path coefficients so everything is here this is your outer loading here you can export it as well into excel html and you can create a data file out of it as well so this was just a basic introduction to smart pls4 you can have your reports as well here are the reports you can run your pls again you can go to calculate and do other analysis as well and let's look at what is available bootstrapping confirmatory tetrad analysis ipma pls predict so all others are available let's go back if you want to save it you can save it as well yes i want to save it so double click on it and it will open again so this is a basic introduction to smart pls4 we can run bootstrapping as well if you want so i'm going to introduce uh, the software in detail in coming days and i'm planning to do a complete series right from the very basic to advanced analysis using smart pls4 so stay tuned Thank you very much.